Hi, and welcome to a cup and the catch up with the WDC. I'm Caroline, and I'm here today with my colleague Nikki. Hi. Hello. In these videos, we'll just be sitting down and having a chat with you about some of the things we've been discussing with your fellow students over the past few weeks. We'll be talking about the main issues and challenges students have been raising with us, and we'll be sharing our top tips and advice with you all should you be experiencing similar challenges. So I've settled in, I've got my cozy blanket, which is probably just out of shot, and, and my cup of tea. And I've got my cup. I've got my coffee here in my fancy mug. I don't know if you can see this. I've got my um, a Christmas mug. I've also got a festive flavour tea as well. well. So I'm all... Now I'm just feeling inadequate. But here we go. I've got I've got my red. I've got my red on. That's that's my festive. Yeah, I've got a bit of glitter on, which hopefully won't, won't blind everybody. Um, so welcome. I hope you're all um, feeling cosy with us. Settle in. This is just a chance to just hang out and have a little chat with us. Um, and let's talk about today's theme, as it were, which is really what we've been talking about mostly for, for the whole semester with, with students is the shift to online learning and the issues that that's raised, really. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a hell of a term, hasn't it? it really, it really has. Um, it's, yeah. Okay, so what we've seen um, is sort of the main issues that's come out of that shift to online learning is that the feeling of the, the lack of structure, the lack of accountability, um, which can lead to procrastination and at least the feeling that you're falling behind, even if you're not necessarily. And that's something I've personally felt as well, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think something else that kind of plays into that is the fact that there seems to be just less chance for like an informal conversation with your like course mates co-workers and stuff so you yeah. can't like grab someone just after a lecture and be like what was that all about um and that can sometimes make it feel like you're the only one having difficulty yes um so you can sort of yeah. add to that feeling of isolation that sort of yeah with me everybody knows how to do this apart from me <laughs> yeah which you know you can take it from us that's that's not the case <laughs> um a lot of people are legitimately finding a lot of challenges with with transitioning to online working absolutely the other thing is something that I've branded as canvas overwhelm. Yes. Um, the synchronous stuff, there's non-synchronous stuff, there's extra reading, there's life stuff, there's general 2020-ness on top of that. I think and, and sometimes it, it can feel like there's so much stuff. And this is something, again, I've experienced that you just freeze, don't you? Yeah, it, so it can feel kind of intimidating almost. You know, yeah. if you go on canvas and you see all those things and they're saying they're competing for your attention. No, yeah. watch me, read me, take this quiz. It can feel yeah. a lot. Constant notifications, just yeah. feel like we can never switch off. And there's, I think a, a lot, I'm hearing a lot of people say this, I'm also feeling it. Um, mm. There's so much to do, you end up doing nothing because you just like shut down and you feel so overwhelmed. Yeah. It's like you're protecting yourself from it. Yeah. Like that is, that is too much. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of what we're going to be talking about in, in, in this video. Um, so just to begin with a kind of a, a general word, and if you're sort of watching this video at home or wherever you are, hopefully with your cuppa, um, thinking, oh, that, that's me, I'm experiencing some of this. The, the first thing I would say if you're feeling overwhelmed is, is continuing your studies the best thing for you mm -hmm. now? That's always the first thing I would say um, before I kind of go on to, okay, so I've got some strategies for this, you know, throwing strategies and techniques at people who are just like, oh, I can't right now. Um, so uh, when I've been studying in the past and I've had sort of um, difficult times, I have chosen to interrupt my studies before. And that's something that absolutely um, worked for me, was, was the best um, decision for me at the time. And it's almost like if you were training for a marathon and you broke your leg, you wouldn't keep on training for that marathon. Yeah. Sometimes you, you do need to kind of just stop, um, recover a little bit and, 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 and get yourself better. Yeah, I, I, think, I think I'm really glad that you made that point because it is so important. It's so easy to feel like you have to keep on running that marathon. Mm. Um, whereas, you know, there really is, you know, sometimes it is for the better difference. Take yeah. your studies and, and put it to the side for a moment while you recover, while you do yeah. what you need to do, and then just pick it up again. 
And I, I don't know about you, Nikki, but we hear so much about resilience now. And I think resilience has kind of been twisted as a term. Yeah. And like, you've got to keep on going no matter what. You've got to be super strong and superhero yeah. and don't don't ever give up. And it, it puts a lot of pressure on the individual, yeah. doesn't it? it it's, like, you know, it's all about you. Um, yeah. And actually, sometimes there are legitimate external factors that mean that I've got to, I've got to take care of myself here. Yeah. And resilience doesn't mean that. Resilience means checking your resources. Have you got enough resources, energy, is your mental health, you know, in, in the right place for you, to, for you to keep on going? Um, so if, if that is something that you think, oh, you know, you can discuss your options starting with your personal tutor, um, if that overwhelm is really, you know, um, getting out of hand and, and making you unwell, um, then I, I would uh, encourage you to discuss that with a mental health professional, including the staff from the student wellbeing team, as well um, but if you've decided that you know pushing through and, and trying to make things manageable um, is the best thing for you now then we're going to share some tips and advice with you um, in, in this video that you might find useful so beginning with creating structure and accountability I find this really hard to advise on because it's very difficult I find not to give simplistic, basic, unhelpful advice. So just make yourself a timetable. I have to, I can't stick to it. Well, put it on your fridge, that'll help, bye. Um, Absolutely, yeah, it is such not, a difficult thing to talk about, isn't it? Yeah, because if it, it, it was that easy, it would be that easy. Yeah. Um, and, go on. Yeah, and a lot of the, the stuff that you kind of see online will make it seem that easy as well. If you were to like Google, you know, time management strategies or, or tips for keeping on top of stuff, you're going to get stuff that's just basically that. Make a timetable, make a to-do list. And it's Five like, tips of highly effective yeah. people get up at 6.30 in the morning. And again, it puts the pressure on you, right? It makes it sound like, well, it's so easy. Why can't I do this properly? Well, the reason is, it's because it's not that easy. Yeah, it internalises the problem. And I think that's Absolutely. the first thing to avoid. It is not you. You are not being lazy. You are not, fi you are not finding this difficult. It is difficult. And I think Absolutely. that's Absolutely good shift in yeah. emphasis just you know stop blaming yourself don't literally i know it's a cliche but don't beat yourself up about this mm. um so you nikki have got quite a few kind of good tips that you've been sort of sharing with students this semester on this that's kind of steer away from that and just make a timetable <laughs> yes <laughs> um yeah it is a conversation that i've been having a lot this yeah. semester for very obvious reasons um, and I think, you know, one of the other very problematic things about the, the normal advice is that it's so generic. It's just like, do this and it will work for everyone. When, like, structuring your time is a really personal thing because you've got to take account of your personal circumstances. Yes. So I, I, I think it's a, a better place to start with that, to start with, well, what mm -hmm. might stop you? Or what obstacles might you face when trying to implement these strategies? Um, so if you've tried doing them in the past, you know, a good starting point would be going, well, this is when I try to, you know, get a, a mm -hmm. timetable and, and these are the problems that I faced and then thinking, okay, can I, can I build something in to, to make that less likely to happen? Um, you know, almost yeah. developing the infrastructure for it. Um, you, you start by going back to, okay, because most people have already tried this. It's not like yeah. it's more like make a time. It's like, I've never thought of <laughs> Exactly, <before."> right? Um, <laughs> wow, you're geniuses. Why you <laughs> Timetable. <laughs> yeah. um, so it, it's something that you most people have, have already done. And like you said, retrace your steps. What, what was it? Yeah. Um, that sort of threw you off course with it as well. Yeah. Um, um, you, you, you're talking as well about how to create that all important accountability, uh, sorry, accountability, because that's a thing, isn't it? Mm, yeah. it's, it's not just the sort of lack of structure, it's that lack of accountability. Yeah, like if, if you have, um, you know, seminars and people are going to notice if you're not there, you mm. might still have online seminars, but it, it's less noticeable. And I think that it's that external kind of validation of what you're doing that might be missing. And I think this actually plays into one of the most common reasons that, that, that comes up about why these schedules don't often work, which is often I'll be talking to a student, I'll say, hey, it worked really well for the first couple of days uh, mm -hmm. or for the first week, but then I just kind of lost motivation with it or you know, I lost focus and it, and it petered out. And part of that might be 
that it's not um, that we haven't created this accountability network, this accountability structure. Okay. So I, I remember when I, you know, started one of my numerous diets that I've tried in the past. The first thing they say is tell everyone you're on a diet, right? Because then you've you've got people saying, well, firstly you have the judgmental people saying, aren't you supposed to be on a diet? That's not great. But you also have people supporting you, right? <laughs> it's it's the eating handfuls of celebrations all at once diet, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely tried that diet too, yeah. Uh, the gluttony diet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think what, so I mean, what's useful about that though is it does create the sense of accountability of other people knowing it and it externalizes it. Yeah. Um, so one thing you might try is choose a couple of people that, that aren't going to be judgmental, people that you trust, and, and just say, well, this is what I'm planning to do. Could you maybe check in with me uh, mm -hmm. at some point just to see how that's going? And you may find that just having that knowledge that someone else knows what you're doing can provide a spur or a, a further kind of, um, well, I don't know, I'm not sure what word I'm looking for, an, an extra motivator. Yeah, it's that accountability, isn't it? That kind of, you know, if you tell someone, you know, mm. that you're doing it, you, 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 you create that, you know, like you said, the motivation yourself. You, one thing I've been talking about with students as well um, and I'm going to try not to show my age too much here because I'm going to talk about using social media, but in a very vague way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you all using these days. Um, using things like Twitter or, or, or probably something a little bit more like like you do actually use. I was um, TikToking the other day. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, didn't talk I wasn't. Um, we we don't do this. Don't look for those videos out there. Um, using social media to kind of um do things like reading sprints or writing sprints with friends where sort of that unstructured study time then becomes a little bit more structured let's do 20 minutes reading sprint okay so you're at the other end of it um but those kinds of things can, can help with that as well yeah uh, and it might feel a bit strange to be like online quietly working with someone else but you might be surprised how effective it is yeah um, and, and you talk as well nikki about sort of creating soft deadlines and like and and, and bribing yeah self-bribery <laughs> i love that get that handful of celebrations um yeah and i th yeah i think one of the another one of the reasons that we often give up on these kind of things is that they seem to be quite negative or they can feel quite negative it's like if i don't do this then i'm going to fall behind and i'm going to have to do that mm -hmm. and it makes these structures feel like an imposition something that you don't want in your life mm -hmm. so you know, quite a simple way of reframing that is to do, well, if I do do this, then I get this. And that might be an internal motivator. If I do this, I'll get tomorrow off. Great. Or it could be what I like, an external motivator. If I do this, I get my hand for the celebrations. Yeah. Well, uh, sorry, I, I do apologise for how food motivated we are, but... I don't apologise for that. <laughs> but it is a, it's a recurring I theme. Apologize. Or, you know, that, that next episode of that, that Netflix series. I'm yeah, doing. that's the kind of thing that would motivate me and a handful of celebrations while I'm watching. Yeah, a bit of AMD. By the way, just, uh, we, we were aware that other confectionery... And, and streaming services are available. Yes. Um, but, I've, you know, I've got to say, Breaking Bad got me through my third year. Because uh, I was, you know, very much kind of, right, if I, if I do this reading, if I, if I write this summary, I get to see the next episode and find out what happens. Yeah that meth empire. Yeah, bribing does work. Bribing um, works. The, one of the other things that um, I've heard a lot this year is that things end up taking longer than I planned. Like what doesn't take longer uh, than you planned? Like nothing in life. Everything is a faff. If, if you know me in real life, you know that that is one of my catchphrases. Everything is such a faff. It is. Um, and then I, a lot of people sort of saying everything, it takes longer than I planned. And then I end up kind of, it, that is a demotivator, isn't it? Yeah. I end up falling behind, I give up. And you've got some great advice around this that I'm going to try and take myself. <laughs> well, <laughs> same. I'm always trying to take this advice too. This is the one that really gets me, actually. Yeah. Which, like, you know, I've set up this lovely schedule. Once mm -hmm. I've broken one of those deadlines or something taken longer, suddenly the whole thing's out of whack and I just go, give up. So yeah. I'm done. One of the things that you, you might be able to do, and it, it does depend, is um, try and prevent yourself from, from snowballing those delays. So if I haven't achieved everything I want to achieve in the first day, try not to stick it at the start of the second day, but move yeah. it to the end. Because when you stick it at the start of the second day, that's going to then throw everything out of whack a bit. Yeah. If possible, that can be a, a useful approach, but it's not always possible because sometimes I have to do step A to get to step B, right? 
um, in a, in which case we just might want to be a bit more flexible. Yes. Um, and and actually avoid scheduling too far in advance. So it can feel really useful if I go, right, I've got my entire semester scheduled out. I know what I'm doing. It can feel great. But once one thing falls, the, the other side is going to start a domino effect, right? And that can really make you lose motivation and go, you know what, can it. Um, so just scheduling maybe maybe only a week in advance, or maybe even a couple of days. When yeah. I was first getting used to creating my own schedule, that's what I do. I schedule two days in advance. Mm. Um, and I would even say just work within the day. Yeah. Get up in the morning. If you know, sometimes if you're feeling really overwhelmed, if you're feeling quite burned out and really rubbish, you need to treat yourself very gently, very kindly, and just like, right, what do I feel up to today? What can I pick from the list that I feel that I could do today? What would I be happy that I've achieved by the end of this day? Working with the energy levels I've got, the mood I'm in. Yeah, and it just allows you to be a bit more agile and a bit more flexible. Yeah. You, know, you can respond to something that took a bit longer than you expected. Um, it's like not that we condone dieting uh, we don't but it's <laughs> going back going back to that metaphor or yeah. simile that you used earlier but it's like when you you are at right I'm on a diet and then on day two you like eat five hobnobs like right well I've blown the diet now yes exactly <laughs> that happen, you can you, you've eaten five hobnobs it's fine it happens yeah and then just just restart the next day rather than allowing oh, that to just, kind of yeah escalate yeah and also um and I think this is key something that you advise students and that I do as well, actually, um, is having a clearly defined end point, yes. having a clear target, not just, I'm going to write, and we'll talk more about this later on, actually, as well. I'm going to write my essay today. I'm going to finish this yes. essay today. And what, what, what actually is realistic for you on that day? What does enough look like? How do you know when, you, when you're finished? Um, and again, you, you'll get demotivated if you're never reaching the end point or if you, if you can't even see the end point. Yeah, like, so, you know, sometimes you might put, my, my task for the morning is reading. It's like, well, okay, can we be more specific? Reading what? Yeah. How am I going to read? Am I going to just skim through three articles? Am I going to do in-depth notes on, on one article? Having a slightly clear thing, uh, end point can help you make sure that you're that you're not just kind of keep going and going and going because you go well I've done a reading but have I read enough I don't know you need to start trying to quantify that a little yeah. bit yeah and and that keeps you on track if you like right hit that target and then mm. it, it, it's, it's just a, a good way and you talk as well about building in contingency time yeah um well my my equation for myself is everything that I want to do I times it by two because I I for some reason think I'm some kind of superman so if I'm kind of give myself 90 minutes you to do something, man, I think this. <laughs> uh, once, once I, if I give myself 90 minutes, I'm, I'm really going to be building in like three hours for that. Uh, not, yeah, that's right, isn't it? 90 times two is three hours. Yes, correct. Don't know we're in the right development centre. Not the mass development centre. Um, yeah. People who are like, watch this. <laughs> <don't know. laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. So um, just building in that extra bit of time in the day. It might not be that extreme. That's what I do for me because I just know I'm very unrealistic still, you know. Um, and it, it's an ongoing process as well. So you might end up recognising how much extra you generally need to build into a day for things that happen. I think that's good because I'm talking to particularly a lot of first-year students, first-year undergraduates, but also people who've just started a master's course as well, who are kind of just, I think, realising or... Oh, there's a few more layers to the process than I yes. expected and and that's kind of thrown them off certainly if you uh, when I was at school you know just after the dinosaurs disappeared and confused everyone um it was kind of like when we wrote, when we wrote an essay it was like you wrote it overnight you, you wouldn't like plan it you wouldn't edit it afterwards you would just hand it in and then at university it's a little bit more about you know there's more stages to the process you do your research, you do a plan, you start drafting, you think, oh, I, I need a bit more information, go back to the reading. And then there's the editing, which I might do a whole, might do a whole extra video on one day because I've got so much to say about editing. So yeah. I really believe that's where the majority of the marks are won and lost for me. Um, but I think people are finding, oh, there's more to this um, yes. than, than I thought. Um, I need more time to really develop my potential with each piece of work. So I think that is a top tip from, yeah. from there. 
just building in that contingency time. Yeah, it just makes it less likely that that kind of domino effect will happen. But yeah. like we say, even if it does happen, that's not necessarily the end of things. That, that's just, you know, we, we, we can do a reset. We can have flexible deadlines, things like that. I think if you take anything away from, from this section here, it's that flexibility that, you know, it's not a one chance thing. It's, you know, if something overruns, it's not the whole thing down the drain. It's, you know, okay, right, how can I, how can I just, you know, redirect the course a little bit? It doesn't even mean that you've done anything wrong either. So it takes you longer. It just means that you didn't have all the information when you set out on the task. Yeah. Um, you're you learning can... more about how, how you work and how long things take. So it's all experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. Big, just before we sort of um, round off this little section on creating structure and accountability, um, big thing happen, happens to us all. I just keep getting distracted. I uh, yeah. start wanting to work. Um, but before I know it, I just end up doing something else. Yeah. Um, it, it's just, yeah. Especially now we're working from home, right? I mean, yeah. In fairness, even when I was working in a work context, I'd still get easily distracted. But now it's just it's much more possible, I think. Yeah, I, I did that. Yeah, I sort of had about 10 minutes between student appointments. I was like, oh, I'll start doing the laundry. I'll start doing this. I'll start doing that. I'm like, oh, um, yeah. it, it puts everything, all aspects of your life are, are present at once now, rather exactly. than, you know, sort of you, you go to work and you just sort of shut the door and you think, oh, I won't worry about the laundry or the fact that the kitchens probably needs to be condemned. Um, so you have, again, lots of good tips around this. Yeah. Uh, so this is one of the big things that I think that, that kind of stops that kind of timetable thing work and the fact that, well, I just can't stick to it. I'm very, I'm getting Yes, to exactly. Um, and I think, you know, one of the things to notice is there's sometimes procrastination will happen, and in fact, often it will happen without even noticing it. Yeah. Is that you can quite easily automatically slip into something. So for mm -hmm. me, the, the, the trigger is that I'll, I'll just kind of take my phone, I'll have a little look. Oh, you know, I'll have a look at this, I'll have a look at that. I've spent 30 minutes doom scrolling before mm -hmm. I know it. I right? Recall. Reading those little news stories about people that don't even know. Yeah, and like, it's just, just why? But you know, it's it's because it's that automatic thing. It's because it's taken me a while to recognise it. So one of the things about procrastination is that the I like to think of it as the aim isn't to never procrastinate because that's mm -hmm. going to happen. The aim is to get better at recognising when you're procrastinating. Yeah, and and to have some features in there to, to stop you a bit earlier on. Um, and so one thing is something that. Um, is, is sometimes referred to as hurdling, which is where we, we put small obstacles in the way as a way of kind of triggering your brain to kind of go, oh, wait, this is what I'm doing. So an example might be if I was to constantly be distracted by just checking my emails, mm -hmm. just logging out of the email. So there's that uh -huh. extra step I have to take. I have to then log in. And as I'm logging in, I'm thinking, hold on a minute. Shouldn't I be doing something else? Uh, or it might be setting, you know, turning off your Wi-Fi if, if you don't need it. Uh -huh. Um, but just adding a small extra layer, that layer is not going to stop you, but it will get you thinking. Maybe, oh, I'm doing this and, and kind of give you sort of the Jiminy Cricket on your yes. shoulder, the chance yes. to kind of go, do you really want to do this now? Yeah. No. Or else. And also, I'm very lazy. So if I put my phone in the kitchen, I'm yeah. like, oh, it's not, I don't, do I really, really want to read about what Kim Kardashian's done? Not really. And I think there is something worth nuancing at this point because this is a conversation i've actually been having with with a couple of students which is that yes. if you're self-isolating or if you're um you know living by yourself you might be using that phone as a bit of a lifeline in which case yeah. it might not be appropriate to just take the phone and put it away mm. um in which case what we can do is we might try and distinguish between instant messaging things like like whatsapp and more general social media like uh twitter and all those other platforms that we don't really know about uh yeah twitch or whatever uh god i have no idea but so you know one thing might be just keeping keeping the instant messaging stuff that you're using to communicate um in on the like the front home page of your of your device and moving the other apps to either like a, a subfolder or slightly mm -hmm. kind of further down so again we, we're doing this hurdling but we're also being mindful of the particular circumstances that, yeah. that we're in yeah um, so not kind of just because again anxiety can creep, creep in if, if you haven't got your sort of safety net yeah as well avoiding a blanket ban I think can be, can be yeah. useful. just kind of knowing well actually this is performing a really important function for me right now 
Yeah, and that, that kind of taps in to a, a lot about what I'm experiencing and, and talking to a lot of students as well. Um, kind of that that anxiety as well and kind of wanting to be in touch with people and, and not yeah. be out of the loop too long. So that works well with something that we've always recommended at the Writing Development Centre, which is work with your concentration span and not against it. I can not concentrate for like 15 or 20 minutes before I'm like, oh. Um, so I kind of work in short bursts at a timer for 15 minutes if I'm feeling a little bit more distractible. Um, 20 minutes, no longer than 30. Um, so I'm working for no longer than 30 minutes before I have like a five five minute break, checking messages, is everyone okay? Um, that, that, that sort of thing. Um, and and you, might, you might have heard of the Pomodoro technique yes. as well, which kind of taps into that. Um, and as, as something else that can help um, not to get distracted as, as well is chunking the day into different activities, which is something mm. that you recommend as well, isn't it, Mickey? Yeah. Well, I think it's because the procrastination isn't always something that's obviously procrastination. It can be that I'm procrastinating by doing reading when maybe I've done enough reading and I want to move on to do something else, right? Um, and by having those different kind of chunks of activities throughout the day, it kind of it, it can it can be a reminder almost to be like okay this is what I'm going to spend doing this this is what I'm going to spend doing that um and I think again it's, it's about working with your concentration span so it will look different for different people and maybe at different times of day as well um yeah. mm -hmm. I know I'm more alert in the morning uh so I might have a longer pomodoro I might have you know I might be able to maintain a 40 minutes one in the morning <laughs> there's no chance I'm doing that after three o'clock it's interesting you mention that because I've had this conversation a couple of times with students where they realise that they're trying to go at the same pace all the time throughout the day yeah. and that's causing them to feel overwhelmed. So we talked about what we've talked about is like um, mixing of tasks, like some tasks are a little bit more, um, what's the word, like applied than yes. others sort of like, you know, get analysing an essay question or getting an essay off the ground. And others sort of just like getting a general background, making a few notes on a topic mm. are a little bit more... Um, you know, a bit less applied, a bit less intense potentially. Um, so it's about identifying lots of different tasks that you can do. So you feel productive. You don't feel like you, you know, you're just spinning your wheels, like you are making progress, but you're aware like, okay, what do I feel like doing? Um, and, and being yeah. able to switch tasks throughout the day to kind of, yeah. And this, this actually reminds me of something that I was experiencing was I was often sending all my emails in the morning and that's a bit of a kind of low level administrative yeah. task. And what I realized eventually was, hold on, I'm working better. I'm more cognitively applied in the morning. I should be working on refining my thesis or I should be working on editing down my work at that point and then send my emails later. Yeah. Um, so it's about knowing what's what's high intensity and low intensity for you and scheduling it for an appropriate time. Yes. Um, and, you know, some people work much better in the evening as well. You know, that's yes. just my example that I happen to work well in the morning, but it, it's oh. about your rhythms. I think as I get older, my window is closing. <laughs> it'd be like morning, and I was like maybe between sort of half ten to like quarter to one, and then yes, I'm, I'm going to get down to a golden hour eventually, where it's just like that's it. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Um, okay, so hopefully, if you've stayed with us, well done. Um, yeah. Lots of tips there, on, and and I think that that is, I think, what we're all feeling. It's that kind of just. Time is just doing such strange things in 2020 and mm. it's taken all our sense of structure away. Um, so some ways in which you can build that back in. The other big thing that we're seeing is just like as I mentioned at the start of the video, people just feeling very overwhelmed with the amount of work that they have to do, just freezing. Um, and one of the things that we've been, I've, been I've been talking about a lot with students is that responding to that by, right, I'm going to make a to-do list I do this as well. And the yeah. to-do list, the to-do list ends up being four or five pages long. It just makes everything worse. Yeah, it's and, up there with a the timetable in my mind as kind of superficial things that can actually make things worse. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that I kind of have been recommending is instead of making a to-do list, make a next action list. Mm kind of picks up with what we've been talking about already that kind of breaking it down so instead of right I need to start my essay it's okay the next 
action, the next thing I need to do is analyze that question and work out what I need to do. Right, I've made a start. What would the next step be? It's almost just like inching your way through it, breaking what looks like a huge daunting task that's going to make you feel when you're not feeling at your best, quite unsettled about doing. It just breaks it down. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's really great because it's almost like a two for one benefit. Because rather than having a huge list of things, you're, you're dealing with one thing at a time. So it feels less intimidating, but it's also more granular. It also helps you understand the different stages as well. Yeah. Um, so it's like, I, th I think that's like a win-win. Uh, it's it's because like, you, like we talked about before, when we're talking about how to create build in contingency time, mm. it's sometimes issues creep up because you don't realize how much is involved with something. So the next action list in terms of breaking it down, you can be like, oh, all right, okay. I can, or there's, there's more to that than I, than I initially thought. So I need to allow more time for this. Because mm -hmm. um, a, a lot of the time that, that feeling of this takes longer than I expect, you think it's because you've done something wrong. It's not, it's because it's a very layered, complicated yeah. process. That's just the process, it is complex. Yeah. Yeah. Um, adjacent to that is something else I've been talking to people quite a bit about um, is, when the brain is overwhelmed, what it does, the naughty thing, um, is it, it You're telling off your brain. <laughs> it, can't, it can't prioritize. Everything seems as urgent as everything else. Yeah. It, the adrenaline spikes, particularly if you've got anxiety like I have, so that's been great this year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it treats everything like it's a fire um it isn't so it's about okay not you don't have to do everything today so my tip for that and this is um i think i first heard this from a colleague in student well-being um is the four d's which is do defer ditch and delegate now mm. just do run through that is do what by the end of the day do you feel that is most urgent that you need to do what would settle you down the most what are your your priorities okay um not everything will be a do if you really just stop to think about it you don't need to do absolutely everything right now so what is then a defer what is okay within the next few days i really need to get to that but it's not for now What's a ditch, which is not, don't need to think about that. And what's a delegate? Now, as Nikki mentioned, we are, a lot of us in isolation right now. So there might not be someone around where you could go, would you mind doing this? Yeah. Um, but but if if there is, if there's sort of some tasks, like, you know, if you share a house, or could would you be able to take my dishwasher duty today and I'll do yours tomorrow? Or, you know, we often do that at, um, at work don't we Nikki sort of oh I'm really cush would you be able to help yeah, absolutely and and I think that kind of thing yeah and I think I think delegation is one of those things that it can feel almost like you might feel reluctant to do it because it feels like oh it's an imposition but it's, it's really not because often those are reciprocal relationships yeah right if, yeah. if you delegate to someone else there they'll feel free to delegate to you yes exactly um so just to elaborate on that just slightly just because something is a ditch on a Monday doesn't mean it's it it, it might then become a, a do on a Wednesday, um, but it's just a way of prioritizing for that day. Mm. And I think that's re that's really interesting because um I kind of do something similar, but it's it's for a slightly longer term. So it's a similar way of doing something very um it's a similar way of doing something, but it's a bit different. So it's something called an urgency importance matrix, yes. which is a fancy name, but it's just basically a square cut into four. Um, and I do actually have one because I thought we might be talking about this. So Ooh. here's one I prepared earlier. Oh my uh, god, your blue Peter. Now I'm not sure if you can see that. So you can see there's yeah. some quadrants on the top, some quadrants down the side with urgent, non-urgent, important, mm -hmm. non-important. And it's basically just a way of kind of telling yourself or kind of clarifying for yourself what you need to be getting on with and what you kind of might first. So if something's you know, if you've got an essay due in tomorrow and it's 100% of your marks, well, that might go in the priority section, right? Because it's <laughs> urgent and it's important. If you've got something due in, you know, in, in February, but it's, you know, it's fairly important. Am I looking at the right one? Yes. Something due in February, but it's it's fairly important. 
then you might, it's a goal. You're going to keep it in mind. Yeah. But later. And I think this is actually something that might be better for a longer term plan yes. strategy. Yeah. And I think it actually works really nicely in complements um, the, the, the four Ds. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that's, that's, that's quite interesting. That. Yes, uh, I like that because it's, sometimes when, when you are feeling very stressed, it's because everything is at the front of your brain. Yeah. And I think that that matrix is a way of just, right, I'm going to park that. I, it I, out. I've written it down so I won't forget it. I'm going to be fine with it. I know I need to do it, but it's just just parked for now. And I, I, I think it's that. And the act of just sort of writing it down and it, it can be quite calming as well. It, yeah, it really can. Another thing that that has cropped up quite a lot this semester is people saying I've fallen behind or just feeling mm. like they've fallen behind. Um, I always feel like this. Um, so for this, I think what I've been saying is try to identify the very basics that you need, um, be selective. You can't catch up on all the lectures now, all the additional reading. Think about what you need for the assignments. Mm. Um, or if you have an exam, think about what's core knowledge. What do you kind of need going into that exam do you think what are what's the sort of you know the essentials in your discipline yeah and it can feel a little bit intimidating making that decision because there's always going to be that thought well what if I think this is essential but it, it might not be and yeah. the reality is we can, we can never know for certain but we can make in, in informed or yeah. educated guesses yeah and you've um, some tips for doing this haven't you sort of the methods like for distinguishing essential from non from non-essential yeah. stuff to be more selective. Yeah, I think, well, I think there are kind of two ways we can do this. One is by looking externally and one is by looking internally. So to start with the external, um, if you're like not sure, you might just be looking to take cues from your lecturers or your supervisors or the module handbook. So each module will often have a handbook and they may state the aims of the module in there. And that can actually give you some some little clues as to, as to what's they're prioritizing. So if it's, you know, we're looking at the latest developments in pharmacology, right? That's that's the aim of the module, but you've got a lecture that's on the historical background, you might know to yourself, well, maybe that's not as important as some of the other stuff. So we don't know for certain, but it's a good way of picking up clues mm -hmm. from your from your environment. Or or seeing things that repeat themselves throughout the course. If if you see a certain theme or topic coming up again and again, chances are that's going to be quite important. Um, so, you know, these are ways that we can make that selection process. Yeah, and you talked about the need to write, uh, and I like this point, write down the reasons as well. So when you start yes. to doubt yourself, you've kind of got that, no, this is why I made that decision. Okay, yeah, that, sound, that and, seems sound. And I think, and I think that's um, such a common thing to happen. Like you make these decisions yeah. and you kind of go, right, and this is why I've done it. And then when you're doing it, that little voice will go, but what about that? What if there's yeah. something in there? And then that's used point to redirect yourself to kind of go, well, these are the reasons. And having that written down physically and visible for you can be quite reassuring. And it's, you know, it's, it's like saying, even if you decide not to prioritize anything and look at everything equally, that's still a choice, right? There's, there's no such thing as not making a choice in this sense. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think it's just a different way of looking at it is that we can make those choices effectively based on evidence and what we can realistically do. Yes. And I like how you use the kind of a metaphor of a dial quite a lot. Oh, I love that metaphor myself. I, Sorry, uh, that sounded really I also, braggy. <laughs> I also like it. No, I have stolen it because um, you, <laughs> you used it in a, um, a live Q&A that we did. And then I, I stole it and used it in a one to one. Um, oh. It's not stealing. It's, it's not it's, stealing. You're, we're developing each other's practice or whatever. Yes. Anyway, yeah. you have talked about setting the engagement dial. Yes. Or the dial of engagement. Once you have identified what's an essential task and what's kind of more peripheral. Yeah. Do so, tell us, you tell us all about this. I think I think one of the ways that I've often seen once people kind of leading themselves to burnout is is to feel like they have to kind of do everything for every single item. You know, every single task they've got. They feel like if you've got a lecture, I want to write uh, full notes on that lecture. I want to then convert those notes into a, a diagram and then I want to re-watch that lecture and pull out a further reading and do that further reading. Okay, we could do that. And if that was an essential lecture, fine. But we probably can't do that for every single one. In fact, you can't do that for every yeah. single one. Um, 
So what we might think about is the different levels of engagement we can use. So that first example, that might be engagement up to 10. I'm doing everything within my tool chest to make sure that I'm understanding and, and learning this kind of concept, this theme, whatever it is in, in detail. If there's something that eh, is not particularly important, if it's that the historical basis of pharmacology in, in that previous module that we, we just mentioned before, I might set the engagement down to two or three. You know? I'm gonna I'm gonna skim through it, maybe take a couple of notes on what I think are you know the one or two most important points. Um, so it's just being aware of the different levels that we can engage with a piece of work or a, a, a resource that's online, um, and, and making a conscious decision when we're gonna crank that dial up to ten and when we're gonna leave it a bit lower. Yeah, and I think I can immediately start to see how that would help us avoid that feeling of overwhelm and burnout mm. not going up it's not going at 10 all the time which i think a lot yes. of people, myself included at that certain point is what we've fallen into um so it, it's kind of preserving the energy levels which tips in is something else that i just wanted to sort of as as we um start to to round this video off wanted to mention which is i've spoken to so many people this year who've been denying themselves a break so yes. As we come up to the holidays, what I will say is don't deny yourself a break. Don't deny mm -hmm. yourself a rest because it's the equivalent of just not putting petrol in your car and expecting it to start. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, that, that, would, that would be something that I just wanted to kind of to get in there at the end because so many people are just keep, keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. And then, oh, what, why can't I do this anymore? Why am I feeling sort of stressed and overwhelmed? And it's, I think it's something that we all do. And it, it's just, yeah, recognising the, the need to cut ourselves some slack some time and take a break. Your energy and focus is a finite resource. And sometimes we need to, we need to replenish that. We do. With Breaking Bad or having a cup of tea and some handfuls of celebrations and just all, uh, all three at the same time exactly <laughs> whatever you do it's christmas uh, indeed so thank you very much if you've stayed to the end of this video with us um we hope you've enjoyed it we hope you you've enjoyed just having a cup of and a catch up with us we certainly have um and we hope that you've you've got some some tips and strategies that you might want to try or if not just made you feel like okay i'm not alone in feeling these things mm -hmm. and got some important strategies as yeah. well um yeah. so as well if you do want to to come and see us we are doing online one-to-ones at the moment and the details about how you can contact us will be on our end screen um so yes so whatever it is that you celebrate in midwinter or if you're just going to have a break and some time to yourself we hope that you enjoy that um so thank you very much for for your company today and it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from me goodbye. look at that all right, take care. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.